Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost and I help people unlock the full potential within the Airtable software. Today in this video we're going to be taking a look at the page designer block, which is arguably one of the most valuable blocks inside Airtable. Now blocks are part of the premium service of Airtable, so only pro subscribers are going to have access to them, unless you are of course on your free trial as well. So. It, this is, as I said, perhaps one of the most valuable blocks, and in this example I'm going to be showing you how you can print an invoice to a PDF using this block for your clients based on a set of customers and a set of services that you might offer. So without further ado, let's jump on into it. Welcome to Entrepreneurship by the Numbers, where we help unlock the potential of your business with data-driven metrics. Okay, so here we are inside of this template. As you'll see, we have three different tables. And so the, the second table is the customer table. This is going to house all of the data for our customers. So we've got the name of the customer, address, city, state, etc. cetera. Uh, I've even given you the ability in this to add a company logo, which is kind of neat to throw the company logo onto the invoice, and I'll show you that when we get to the invoices. So you could just very easily come in here and add new customers, or you could even present this in a form view if you so chose. The second part, or the third table, excuse me, is the services, and these are the different services that we as a company might offer. So I've built this example to be you know, really simple, something that uh, a web design company might use. So of course you have the service type and then what you charge for it, and then of course don't forget to add taxable ability to, uh, to your services or, or products. So as a general rule, um, a company should be charging sales tax if it is being sold, if it's a tangible good that's being sold to the end user. Otherwise sales tax should not be charged, but definitely check with your accountant, make sure that you are right in either charging or not charging sales tax. Uh, but this is just a simple select, so you can pick either yes or no on the tax. And then of course we have a formula written to calculate how much that tax should be. And if you were to be charging tax, you would need to change this amount. It's currently set to be 8%, but you could of course come in and adjust that to be whatever you wanted it to. And then of course we're going to have a, a total amount based on a summation of the amount plus the tax and then we're tying this table as you see to the invoice. So the customer uh, table and the services table are both tying to the invoice table. So in order to create a new invoice, all we need to do is select a new row and automatically this is going to be populated with the invoice number. And that is based on a hidden field. In here we have an automatic number generator and it will add the next number missing in the field and this uh, driving, uh, this driving column here, or field, excuse me, is being driven on the number of that particular field. So this automatic number is updating here and we're adding a thousand to it. Now when you're generating an invoice you would need to pick your customer. So you can pick them from the list or you could add a new record. In this case I'll just pick a new customer and of course tell it who it was that, uh, that made that sale. In this simple template, it's just me, date created automatically populates here, and then as we add the services, uh, the total will be increased. So as you see with WordPress, WordPress retainer, it's a $500 you know, a month, and, uh, and then our web design, if we were to add that, it would add that as well, and of course there is tax on, the, uh, on one of those. And then this invoice PDF, you'll see it's not quite filled with anything just yet, and this is where that page designer is really going to come into play. So switching over to blocks, we're going to look at the page designer block, jumping in here, I'm just going to expand this for a moment, and you see that we've got automatically generated uh, invoices on a nice 8.5 by 11 sheet. So how we get that is as follows. Inside the page designer, you can set all of the different elements, or excuse me, fields on the table that you're looking at, and you can just pull them in and place them. It's just a nice, easy click drag to wherever you wanted them to be on this page. So, a couple of things that you might run into, uh, some pitfalls here are as follows. When you are adding new uh, data to this template, you're gonna be pulling in all this information. So we're connecting both to our customers 
and to our services and dragging in that information into this table. Now this block can only populate data on this uh, page designer if that data lives in this table that we're looking at. So in order to have access to all of that, we need to have what we call lookup fields to bring in this other data. So just by linking this table to the customer and to the services, we do not necessarily have access to that until we've performed these lookups. So be sure to add the lookups for everything you'd like. And then once you're inside that layout, as I said, you can just click drag and move around. Now to cycle through records, we can click next record and you see this is just going to automatically populate with whatever is on that second record, third record, and then here's the one we just created set with today's date. We added both of these uh, services and this here at the bottom is just a little blurb that I included here. You could make this to be whatever you'd like, uh, but this is going to be constant for every single invoice that we print. Now a bit of advice, what I would choose to do in this case would be to actually print this to a PDF and I would save that PDF and in this case I would just save it to the desktop and the reason for this is you would then have access to see exactly what you invoiced in case somebody comes behind and changes this record I would want to have access to the actual PDF that I sent to that customer and so to get that I would just go to my desktop and drag that in drop it in there and in just a moment Airtable has updated it, so now I have a hard copy of that invoice so that if changes are to be made in the future, I still have access to what we actually sent. Now this could be uh, then further emailed to the customer based on the information here, and if you wanted to get really fancy, you might include a Zap with a Zapier in order to send that invoice automatically. Great. Well, as always, I hope that you found that to be very valuable. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. And please do give this uh, video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. And also click subscribe. In the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire. Thanks.